Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Briggs. I'm Brett and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to show you how to replace an auger motor in a Quadrifier CB1200 freestanding pellet stove. Follow along with us. Okay, here are the tools that you will need in order to change the auger motor in your Quadrifier CB1200 pellet stove. Going over to the battery operated uh, impact along an extension that goes onto the impact. This is another adapter that goes onto the impact that you can actually use the 11 millimeter socket, which will go onto here, go into the impact. Set that aside. Standard Phillips bit goes into the, to the uh, impact and a four millimeter um, Allen that goes into the impact. Then we can go to the other end, which is perfectly fine if you do not have these tools. It's just go old school, which is fine. This is a standard Allen four millimeter. And here is your basic ratchet with an extension. And here's 11 millimeter socket. Just put it on there and then your standard Phillips screwdriver. Very, very important. Prior to doing any work on a pellet stove or today, the auger motor, unplug, unplug, unplug your stove from the wall. You can also unplug right here in the back of the stove. Here's your power. Set it aside, set it to where you know that you have no electricity. Now we can move forward. Okay, this is the first step. We are going to remove the top cover of the CB1200. That's the hopper lid, but we're gonna remove the whole unit, like you can see. So in the back here, Briggs is gonna take a Phillips screwdriver, or use his impact, and lightly loosen each screw. Here we go, do her, Briggs. And right behind, there are five screws in total. Very nice. <laughs> now this weighs a little bit, so gently remove the whole cover like this and set it aside. And when you have it and you set it down, watch out, because this thing can flip on you without sudden notice. Okay, next step is what you want to do is remove all of the pellets out of your hopper. Once you do that, the next step is to remove the pellet adjuster uh, paddle or knob. And Briggs was going to use a wing nut now, take, taking that off. And just take your time and just put each piece and part aside and stay organized. Down here, there is a small adjustment. It's a Phillips screw. Just take your time and... Always make sure you get a good grip on your pieces because last thing you want is to drop one of these down there. Now the next step is he is going to take off the auger cover. It's a shield. And I believe that there's six to eight screws around the sides. So you can see one out. There he goes, another. He's going as fast as he can. And just take your time. And set the screws aside. Stay organized because when you put everything back together, it's really nice that you have all the pieces for a nice repair no stress no worries nicely done <laughs> i love it like so again like my dad said always stay organized make sure you remember where you put these screws right over here we're going to remove the plate and we're going to expose the actual auger motor itself shabam there's the auger motor now the next step is, is this plate. You can see it right there. Briggs kind of showed it there. Let's get rid of 
those from there. You have to remove this plate in order to remove the auger motor shaft assembly. There's four screws. Use your Allen screwdriver, not your Allen, good golly. Use your Phillips screwdriver or your impact to remove these four screws. Set them aside and again, stay organized. And this plate comes off. And again, to be consistent, set it aside so I don't accidentally knock any of the screws anywhere. So the next step, we're gonna go for these four screws on the auger motor itself. For this, this is where the actual extension part comes in handy. So Briggs, there's four screws. So you're putting on the extension, you're putting on the Phillips. This is great. Now, and each corner of the auger motor, right? Each corner. And now, what did you just do with your fingers? You're holding on to those screws because if you don't hold on to the screws, guess what happens? It falls way down underneath the hopper and you won't find it ever again. So stay organized and hold on to the screws when you remove them. Again, there are four on each corner of the automotive. So he's almost got it. And this takes a little finesse. And at this point, you want to have some patience because like my dad said, the last thing you want is dropping it down here. At least right over here, there's a little catch where you can grab it. But right here, it's dropping within the stove and you're just gonna spend more time getting at it. So with those screws removed, there's only two more nuts on this auger motor before we're able to remove it. Why don't we yank that power so we can show everybody where the power is to the auger motor, son. Definitely. So right here, it's okay, everything on the power side for the stove is unplugged, so I'm not gonna get shocked. So completely safe. So right here, we have the connection, completely unconnected for the power. Well, there's no way they're gonna get shocked. Why? Because they unplugged, 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 unplugged their stove prior to doing any work on their pellet stoves. That is true. So what do you got <laughs> there? You got that 11 millimeter? So yes, here we got the 11 millimeter. We're gonna go for the nuts on here. So right here, there are two. This right side one is a lot easier to access. And again, here's the finesse part. I'm gonna set it to the side. Now, there's a reason why I tackled these four screws first. This side, a lot easier to get to, but over here, there's this one that's just a little tight. So because I removed these screws to save some time, I can then move the whole auger motor as so. Wow, there it is. <laughs> that was excellent. And so now I'm able to get in here again with the finesse. Bring it out and set it to the side. And so right now it is completely loose. I'm going to set these stuff down here so I don't lose them. Just keeping everything in order. And right here, I'm gonna de definitely pull out the whole thing. So sometimes there could be, it could stick a little bit here. But with a little finesse again and movement, and being careful with the seal, you're able to pull out the whole auger motor bracket and shaft. And this is what it's gonna look like as so. Okay, the next step is Briggs is going to remove the motor from the auger assembly. And so everyone right here, we have the whole assembly out of the pellet stove. Right here is the motor itself. Here are the connections to the actual shaft and then the bolts. So right in here, this is where our four millimeter Allen wrench will come in handy. So a lot of this where you can access, you can do the manual or the electrical way. The bolt you want to go for is this one right here. You don't want to do this one. Only for the auger motor replacement, just focus on this guy right here. You're going to take your wrench, you're going to either fit in here, and you're going to loosen it. For these purposes, for speeding, I personally like using the electrical. It'll go right in. Four millimeter, four millimeter. So as I go in, it's going to be a little torque. Right there, you can see it is loose. As so, I'm gonna set that to the side, and right then and there, you've now removed your motor 
from your shaft unit. So right here, I got the new auger motor unit and I got the old one. And you can kind of see the differences through the ages. They have the exact same connection right here. And over here, we're gonna start actually connecting the pieces. So one of the most important things on here when you are replacing your auger motor is right here, there is this flat spot. You wanna align this flat spot over here with that screw. If you don't do it, and if it's slightly over here or over here, or if that bolt is not tight enough, even though you might do everything else right and replace it, when this thing is going, this part will start slipping in there and it won't have enough strength to bring pellets into the actual stove in the burn area. And then you'll have a little bit inconsistent or no burn at all. And good golly, you gotta do the whole thing again and you don't wanna do that. No. Take your time, have some fun with it, and do it right. And so right here, there is a lot to hold right here, but the main part is you just want to get this flat spot tight right there. So a lot of times, if you want, here's the patient side. When you're putting it in, you can pre-tighten it with the manual. So you can get a good base on there. It's okay to use old school tools. And right now, it's pre-tightened. A lot of times though, if I want to do a little extra strength, but not too much, this is the importance. Finesse. The finesse, you can do a little bit of the torque wrench. Now the reason why I don't want to torque that any further is because you can actually strip that out. And if that gets stripped out, this is going to be a whole different video. Okay, now Briggs has the full auger assembly put together and now he's going to put it in the pellet stove itself. It's a little finicky. He's gonna talk a little bit about the importance of aligning up the gasket, which is in the back part of the auger. So you got a few moving parts on here. And you can see how I'm holding this to save you a little bit of headache. So you have the gasket right here you need to line up. You have the metal bracket and you also have the plastic bracket. Now, a lot of this stuff can start moving, especially when you put it in. But as long as you have just a little patience and a little finesse, you want to line up these holes down here. So, so gingerly. Is lining up the bolts with that black plate there and it takes a little finesse just to get it right don't force anything just go and there you have it so right here Briggs just pointed he was taking the whole assembly and making sure that it went over both those bolts now that one's exposed the other one on the other side is going to be exposed because as he turns the motor now, look what happens. Then you have access to the other bolt on the other side. Can you put your finger on that, son? Sure, right about here. That's right, so now he's going to take the 11 millimeter socket and he's going to tighten down the assembly. So what I like doing in here, I like to hand thread them first, just to make sure they're on there. And then they also don't fall down this abyss right here. Now the trick here is he just, he would just spin the motor. So you would have access to the other bolt. Good golly, right there. He's gently just putting on those two nuts onto the bolt heads. But now he's going to tighten them. Now you can use the impact or you can use your ratchet with the extension 11 millimeter to tighten down these supports. Nicely done. Now the next thing, what are you gonna do, son? So with this secure, we don't have to worry about it moving around and giving us a headache. But we still have to get these four screws right here. What four screws? Uh, and I'll get them in just a second. So right here. These are the four screws I had set aside. Because you're organized. You keep everything together and everything goes back together so nicely. And that I do. 
So you have four screws on each corner of the auger motor assembly. So when I like to do this, I don't like to tighten them right away. I just like to thread them just enough so that they're in there, but not completely tight. And the reason for that is because if you start tightening them down before you line all the screws with the holes, you could have maybe one or two or a few more holes that are not aligned on the other sides and then trying to get a screw into them, it's not gonna happen. So right there, you can see they're all in, but they're not tightened down. So, so can you show the viewers the four screws that you just put in? So we got this corner, these top two, and then these bottom two down here. So now you're going to tighten each one down slowly. Just go around 360, mm -hmm. a little bit. Don't go crazy with the impact. I mean, if you use an impact, great. If you use a regular screwdriver, fantastic. Whatever floats your boat. If you do use an impact, just be careful. There is a lot of torque in there. And so if you do too much, you could end up stripping it and giving yourself a little bit more work to do. So right now, all the bolts are secure. Your auger motor is in. But before you seal up with all the plates, don't forget to do the connections here. And when you do the connections, you can just tuck them right back in. And there you go. Okay, at this point of the uh, installation, we are going to finish up some of the adapter plates. Briggs is going to show you how to do it. And it's pretty easy. Just take your time. Make sure you have all your screws together. So here we go. So now he's going to put in this face plate. So that face plate, remember, has to be removed in order to take the whole auger motor and shaft assembly out. So he's putting the four screws in. So he's doing them by hand and he's holding onto those screws tightly because if you lose one of those screws, it goes way down underneath the hopper there and you won't get it back out. So just take your time. Finesse, take your time. So yeah, a lot of times, just like with the auger motor screws, I like to kind of preset these by hand and also sometimes just a mix with the torque wrench. So once you have them all get in there, then you want to tighten them up. The reason why sometimes I do a little bit with the torque wrench, because by hand, especially with these small screws, you may not get a good thread in. And if you don't get a good thread in, all it takes is one hand slip. Once it falls down there, a little extra time, a little extra patience, a little extra headache. And you don't want that. It's nothing better than a smooth installation. No stress. You gotta have fun with it. So right now, now we're gonna replace the plate back end the right way. Just as so. And again, we want to do the pre-thread just a little bit. Remember, always finesse. Always finesse with these guys. You don't want to drop the screw and you don't want to strip it out. And you know, sometimes things do happen. So there's many different ways to help correct that if that does happen to you. Sometimes what happens, since these screws are in the hopper area, if you want to actually get in close here, if you can see, that sawdust will accumulate right into the top of the screw. So you can use either a wire brush or something sharp to get in there and kind of get it out. Because if it accumulates too much, and if you're going to be using a screwdriver and all that, with less depth for the bit to go into, you could end up having a higher risk of stripping them. It's real nice. How many you got total there? Six screws? So there are six for this model. We go around the automotor cover. And sometimes, folks, you might get a different variation of the number of screws you have on this plate. They may have a little bit more, a little bit less, but you just want to make sure you count for all of them. 
And you can use a regular screwdriver as well if you don't have an impact. Nicely done. It's all tightened. Okay, we're almost to the final. We are going to be putting in the pellet adjustment paddle. Now it's a little tricky in here. I'm gonna get, try to get a little closer. There's an adjustment set screw that Briggs is putting in. He's gonna hand tighten it. You don't wanna tighten it too much or you will not be able to take this rod and pull it up and down, up and down. So you want that. That's just beautiful, just a little bit. And sometimes you might have to do a little adjustments of where you like it. Sometimes this thing can get a little bent through use or if you over tighten it. And so just finding that right spots and then you're all good. Over here, this is the part where you can help tighten it down so you can still have that flexibility is the wing nuts and the brackets. I can't see the wing nuts, son. Oh, sorry. Viewers can't see the dang wing. There you go. It's a lot better. Thank right you very much. So once you have it set, this you can lock it into place to whatever setting you like as so. And if you want it out more, you loosen this, you pull it up. You want it in more, you loosen it again, pull it back down, tighten it back. Fabulous, very well done. At this point, we're gonna take a little break and then we're gonna put the top cover on and finish this puppy up. Okay, the last part is putting on the hopper lid, the whole assembly. Briggs just picked it up and he's gonna set it on top. Now I'm gonna move around the back because we have some screws to tighten down the back. So here we go. I'll go slow, 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 slow. This flange right here he is lining up with the screws and you'll see when he tightens them down that holds this whole assembly here together so he's going to crank them there's one there's five total finesse don't over tighten it because you don't want to strip it and again, right before I put this lid on, you always want to be careful of this right here. And you saw how I carefully kept it flat, because if you either tilt it to the side or upside down, and if your hand's not holding this, this thing's gonna swing out and cause you a little bit of issues. So here it is, it's totally on. So can you show the viewers the hopper lid, how it com comes open, the regular one? So there you go. So this is a regular one where a lot of people can fill up with more bags. And right here, here's the second one to really get into the whole stove. Now when I lift this, you want to make sure that, again, it's held back. Because if you lift this up, it goes too far and that thing's not hold, that thing's going to slam the back of your stove. And worse yet, good golly, if that whole lid slipped down and hit your wrist and arm or hand, ouch. Trust so us. be very, very careful. Been there, done that. <laughs> Alright, and that's it. Hopefully guys, this video has been pretty helpful for replacing the auger motor on this particular pellet stove. The CB1200FS Quadrifier. We'll see you on the next video and thank you very much. Thanks again guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.